right, Sucio Talk. What is up? What is going on? Hanging out here with Chef Sam Pound. Did I say that correct? Yeah. Yes. All right. Cool. How, How are, are you, Chef? I'm great. Thanks. How awesome. Are you? It's nice to have you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for the pickles. Oh, hey. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So Golden State Pickle Works. It is. Golden State Pickle Works. Awesome. You uh, you were dropping off at Berkeley Bowl, you were telling I me? was dropping off at Berkeley Bowl earlier. We did some deliveries in San Francisco earlier. Okay. Um, and I just dropped off our new line of collective cultures to the new buyer and hoping that we can put together an order. Okay. Yeah. Very next cool. Week. Yeah. We're already in the other Berkeley Bowl, so... Um, I kind of finagled a little um, white lie, perhaps, saying that we are already putting together an order, and I just want to give you samples just so that we can put together the order together. Right. Um, so he accepted. You're, you're in the putting in the wishing well. You're right. Pickles right. in the wishing well. Yes. It's all good. It's happening. You know. I hey, just you're making it happen a little bit. You're faster. in Berkeley Bowl. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. You know. Did you ever, when you started this, did you ever think that it would be what it is today? You know, I um, first of all, calling it Golden State Pickle Works maybe wasn't the best idea. Considering that I was giving people way too much credit on what they knew what pickles were. To the general public, pickles just mean long green cucumbers. Okay. Um, the fact that I have pickled things confuses people. Um, the fact that there's fermented like mayonnaise in our pickle line, it confuses people. When they come up to our stand and they say, oh, so you don't have pickles. All right. Uh, we're changing our name to Collective Cultures. Okay. Um, so when we first started, all I wanted was a way to not have to work in restaurants again. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I did a lot of odd jobs to kind of help um, pay myself a living wage in some sort of way. Mm. And now, yeah, I'm able to pay myself. So it's I can't really ask for more other than I'm always asking for more. And we're always <laughs> trying to get more out of it, you know? <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Cool. How big is your team? So I have three people. Uh, well, I had three people until we were moving uh, kitchens. So okay. um, the fact that we kind of stockpiled a bunch of stuff so that I didn't have to do production. In the meantime, they went off and got different jobs. So, um, All right. yeah. So after this whole kitchen's built out in a couple of months, I will be looking for a one main person. Um, mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I've got my uh, sous chef type person that turned completely back um, computer whiz uh, okay. for ours. Uh, she works remotely in Arizona because her husband got deported to Mexico a couple of years ago. Oh, so, no way. Yeah. So, you know, America. Yeah. yeah um, right. So, she, yeah, she, she goes to visit him often and she has to live near in order for that to happen. So she gets to do all of our designs, all of our websites, communicating with all of our uh, accounts and prospective accounts. Um, and then I have two people who really are not cooks. They happen to come along and they're doing me a favor, but they don't love standing and making pickles every right, day. Right, right. You yeah. really have to love it. It's a labor of love. It is a labor of love, mm -hmm. yes. And the moment you step in the front of the house, the moment you lose them. Yeah. You know? More money for less time. <laughs> More money, less time. You can't, you can't compete with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You, you can't. can't compete with it. No. <laughs> um, that's why I, I asked myself, you know, we're trying to go in this, this new generation of uh, kitchens, mm -hmm. but is there a new generation? Is there a way to make great cuisine only working eight hours a day? Well, I the don't customers know. need to understand what food costs. Mm. Customers are not cool with paying for eighteen dollars for a burger. Right, right. But that's how much a burger costs. Yeah, is eighteen dollars. Does if you're doing it right. Uh, no, and I mean, if you're paying people out of a truck, it's like twenty two nowadays. Well, at least you're buying good meat. Yeah, yeah you're damn right. I mean, yeah. Damn right. I wonder how many places though are not buying good meat. Oh. There's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, um, and then yeah. selling it for more. Yeah. Um, you know, it's always a couple of bad eggs that ruin the omelet. So. Yes. Unfortunately, there's more than a couple of bad eggs. Okay. Is that why you left the restaurant industry? No. Okay. So um, I... We need, we need to take it all the way back. Let's take it all the way back, <laughs> chef. All right. Where were you born? I was born in Kailua, Hawaii. On Oahu. Oh, yes. damn. Okay. Um, island life. Island, island life. Island time. Yes. Is it real? Is island time real? Yeah. Everybody's late all the time. Okay. Everyone's late. And unfortunately for the food 
situation there way you know going like this and kind of weighing how much the um the plate is is how mm -hmm. people kind of determine how worth it is where oh, you know okay, like got you. the more food the better so buffets I'm, are big down there or just lots of white rice and macaroni salad mm. you know um double starch double starch that's that island life yeah i'm sure there were those special people who could afford real food mm -hmm. um and like you know fish that were really caught there um yeah. i can't really understand why it all goes to you know out of you know like at least the mainland the government um the government wow. yes they, yeah. they do that shit in puerto rico too where None of the local restaurants use local fish. It's all basically packaged, sent to the U.S., frozen, yep. and then sent back. It's kind of crazy. And we're also growing all the soy so that we could ship it to China to feed their cows. Oh, no way. Yeah. The, I mean, Good for know. us. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we're the monoculture in, in we're this. We're making moves, baby. Yeah, yeah it's We're feeding bad. cows. It's bad. Someone's got to feed the cows. I guess. You know? Yeah. I wonder if after... So long of feeding cows soy, does something okay. weird happen to them? So with all of the sprays and all of the nasty shit that we're spraying on everything, right. and we're feeding the cows that, and we're eating the cows, why do you think girls are getting their periods at nine years old? Right. Like the, Okay, the GMOs. Yeah, I mean, mm. all the antibiotics, all that nasty shit that we're eventually eating, we're yeah. not eating because we don't buy that kind of stuff. Right. Um, but the majority of this country, because food is expensive, um, this is how you make it less expensive. But in doing so, we're kind of making ourselves much less healthier. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of places, too, that trigger nostalgia, like McDonald's. Mm. Like, I grew up in McDonald's, yeah. you know what I mean? I could never not go there for the rest of my life. Okay. And I know how shitty it is. There? Um, probably like four months ago, maybe okay. six what months ago. Uh, I get two cheeseburgers and fry. Okay. Meal. Well, everybody it's usually number loves two. fries. Usually. The num they usually the own? number two. Yeah. It's because some places you'll walk in, it'll be like the number six. Wow. It's the two cheeseburger meal. In Hawaii, there are, um, there's Simon on the menu and there's Portuguese oh. sausage, eggs and rice on the menu. Really? Uh-huh. On Puerto Rico, there's, uh. Bratanos and Burger King. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I like that though. Yeah. They should do that more up here, like o avocado. Yeah, what? a little avocado. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, put a little real avocado. Some sprouts. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Make it In and out. Lead the charge. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Fucking. Where did we get off? Oh yeah, Hawaii. You're Hawaii, in Hawaii. Yes. Uh, what'd your parents do? Um, my so my father um was a cook of some sort. He um had a pretty hard life he was really had a, a, a life of addiction so by the time we were born i he was in like sonic and, and burger king right yeah being a manager at those places and um yeah um as ghetto as we were um at you know when people would leave bracelets or something like right, the lost right. and found he would wait a week or something and that would be our presence um, okay. Yeah, happy okay. meals. Hey. All those happy meals with all those toys. That's where we got all of our toys from. Right. Yeah. Um, so my dad was a, I can't really say he was a cook. He mm -hmm. was um, going to open restaurants. Hey, he but managed restaurants. He managed restaurants. Yeah. End of the day, it's yeah. All good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. fast casual places. My uh -huh. mother was busy raising five children, so she didn't do anything. Okay. Other than um, kind of. That's a fucking full time it's, job it's a full -time and a half. Job. Yes, it here. is. Yes. Five of you. Five of us. Jesus. I know. I mean, all girls or what? No, two boys, three girls. Okay. Yeah. The boys were older. One boy is older. One boy's younger. My sisters are younger. I bet that kind of helped out that balance in the boys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like, because <laughs> if you put two, both of them are older, it's just like, no. Oh, no. Mayhem. That, yeah. Yeah. That how was, how was um, you guys uh, going to school and things like that? Were you guys close or? Yeah. So we had kind of a rough childhood. So we all five of us really did stick together. Okay. Um, one thing at Enchanted Lake Elementary School, mm. um, the coolest part about it, it was the lunch uh, program. They really did have chefs coming in and make school lunch. And once a month, every class would be a part of serving lunch. Okay. Yeah. Um, we would make the little ice pops at the end of the day, um, you know, scoop things, but still we'd stand in line and scoop things. Um, and yeah, that was kind of our first experience with serving food to people, mm -hmm. which is really cool. 
Um, so you being on the free early. lunch program, yeah. also, you got all the extra ice pops and everything for free. Dope. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. sometimes it pays to be poor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Get all the legit. Yep. You don't have to pay two sixty five nope. for fucking lunch. No. Nope. That sucks, bro. <laughs> Two sixty-five. Two sixty-five. How I much think, it was? I think lunch. Yeah, by the time wow. I left school, it was two sixty-five. I remember. That is, how do you feed a kid for two dollars and sixty-five cents? Yeah, I remember forty cents when I first started. Wow. And it seems like it's like I started in the nineteen thirties <laughs> and ended. You remember in, pay for No, no, no. Too, yeah. It's literally like within six years, it wow. was like forty cents to two dollars. Huh. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah. Every every year you expect it. Oh shit! School lunch is gonna go up again. Yeah. But. I mean, even if it was five dollars, it would still be a good. Yeah. Deal. And it's like I was an only child. My mom worked two jobs. So it was like I needed she. So she made enough money. Mm -hmm. Right. To like not, not be on that, not be lunch. on the free lunch, yeah. but then not enough to be like, yo, it was like it's just expensive. bro. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when they're like writing you a check and being like, all right, motherfucker, <laughs> don't lose this yeah. shit, bro. Yeah. Or yeah. you're fucked. Yes. You know, <laughs> so now the uh, the really old style monopoly looking money that they oh, used to yeah, give you the monopoly the money food stamp stuff Somebody, yeah. yeah today is so much better when i see people mm. who have that little EBT the, the card, card. yeah wow this is yeah. this you just like it's a little bit is, more uh discreet yeah because back in the day it was like oh, fuck. hey everybody look at this yeah exactly. i get to pay with the not card. money yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. i get to pay with not money yeah. chef that's that's <laughs> very very accurate for the hood yeah um okay so high school was good uh you had that cooking experience that you really enjoyed mm -hmm. uh did that push you like what was your first job so so my first job i was five years old with my real first job okay um i was put in commercials because my mother thought that we, she could, you know, just sell us. Right, 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 right. We were in commercials as kids. Okay. Um, which what kind was of cool. commercials? Food commercials. So okay. So one of the best selling or best paying ones, I remember very not cool with the times. Like they put this Indian looking makeup on me and we played inside of a tree. Oh, we were, wow. Yeah, we were like. Chef. Those people. Good production. Um, but I had fish sticks all day long. Yeah. The whole point was the fish stick commercial. And all the kids were just like spit it out after, you know, putting it in their mouth. And I just ate it one after another. So I like, love these fish sticks. Yeah. <laughs> this is like food. You're like, I really love them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all these kids um, are acting. Yep. Uh, we were in, I was in um, Burger King commercials. I was in um, KFC. Um, and then, you know, banks and everything else. But um, yeah, it was... They wanted a, a little island girl to play some right. things. Yeah. Um, okay. my, what year is this? Oh, I was like, oof, at least before 92, 92 to 98. Okay. I moved to Colorado in 98 to be in a um, performing arts school. Oh, um, okay. Played music in performing arts school. What kind of music? Classical, um, clarinet, but it was really more about um, theory and composition at that point. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Yeah. The, the thing about... That is that you kind of have to go to college um, mm. in order to do anything. And with that lack of options, you kind of just have to figure, all right, which jobs will let me have tattoos and let me smoke pot? Right. Cooking is one of them. And we love cooking. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was telling you earlier, it's like, that's why you get into it, the yeah. lifestyle. <laughs> yes. You're like, wait a minute, I can smoke weeds and hold down a job? Yeah. Fucking yeah. sign, sign me this. up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's like... uh it was all the shit you grew up doing anyway, like washing the dishes, cooking for yourself, and taking yep. out the trash. Mm -hmm. It's like, God, oh, now I get paid for chores? <laughs> Great. I got you, bro. Yes. It's all good. Yes. But little did I know how little you make. Yeah. You know, I had to learn that the hard way. I mean, what other thing would you rather do, though? And mm, Absolutely nothing. Uh, maybe yeah. be a barber. I always thought of that. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. That would be... I mean... If I could do anything else, what would I do? I'd definitely stand-up comedian. Okay. 100%. And I definitely can do guy? it. Am I funny? Is yeah. that what you mean? Yeah. Are you funny? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Have you ever tried? Yeah, let's send it. No. See, oh, that's the thing. See. I'm just, uh, and that's what I'm working through, like, understanding that when I say I'm going to do something, you have to do it. And you have to put things on it. So in true chef fashion, like I want there to be a live version of this show, mm -hmm. um, maybe sometime at night, like a 10 p.m. Monday through Friday thing. Aren't so you kind of doing that? Sort of, but it's only on Mondays and I want it to be live. Mm -hmm. Like imagine coming onto a live show after work. Right. You know, right. after service yeah. basically would be the 
be a late night kind of show. But um, eventually, with a few snacks and a little audience, yeah, you know, a little audience, yeah. maybe you know, a little yeah. little laughter, yeah. uh, on air sign. Who knows? The little possibilities are endless, right? Exactly. <laughs> Corny O'Brien, yes. you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I forgot the fucking point I was making. Was so that's, I mean, the fact that you want to do something and you're going to fucking do it. That's what yeah. you're saying. And, you you're know, when you're, it. when you're learning how to cook, you're like, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what exactly I'm doing, but I'm, I guess I'm just going to keep doing it. And eventually I'll get there. Yeah. So, okay. Because I didn't go to culinary school, mm. I knew I had to, you know, school myself, um, reading all the cookbooks and um, just doing everything as much as possible at home so I could go to work and pretend like I knew the motions at least. Mm -hmm. um, when I, the further along I got to restaurants and the more people were telling me what to do, I would watch the way they worked and you don't even know how to make a fucking soup and you're telling me how the, you know, like how are you just putting things in water right now? Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, small little things. Um, I guess that's not very small, though. I was very no, surprised at the fact not. that that person didn't know how to make a soup, yeah. and they were already work already years into being a cook. Mm. Um, but that's just because we're learning what we're learning, and we don't really learn our scales before the songs. Oh, right? very true. Yeah, very true, chef. We just jump into a restaurant and do whatever they ask us to, which is exactly what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And you don't question anything. But you're also not saying, "Where does this come from? Can you show me how you got here?" and Maybe I can help get there too. The things that matter the most. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, it's very institutional. The uh, culinary arts, especially in schools. Yeah. It's like uh, we're training prison chefs, school chefs. Uh, you know, we're not. All we're same. not training Thomas Kellers. We're not trying to make like uh, elite cooks mm -hmm. or whatever the mm -hmm. fuck it was. Um, but you know, it happened anyway, and. The ones that find it, find it. Right. So it was recommended to me not to go to culinary school. Really? Uh -huh. Okay. I, How old were you? I point? was 20. 20? I was 20 okay. when I left Colorado and I moved to Bay Area because I just, it was either Bay Area or New York. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't going to handle New York very well okay. with the weather. Right. Um, so I figured, all right, anywhere in the Bay Area, whoever says that they'll hire me first, I'm going to that town. Uh, somewhere in Berkeley um, hired me. With zero, ex absolutely zero experience, just knowing that I could maybe crack an egg, you know, like, there really was nothing for to, to show for myself. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the the more I learned, or the more I met so many people right out of culinary school, the more I thought, why don't you know how to do this then? Mm -hmm. um, like, if you went to how, culinary yeah, school, yeah. How? What did they teach you there? If you, absolutely if, nothing. If it wasn't this, then what did they teach you? It's a vacation time. Yeah. That there was air conditioning in your kitchen the whole time? Yeah. Sorry, dude. The heat. <laughs> Sometimes like 150 degrees in those uh, motherfuckers. Yeah. So what was your, where were you working at 20 years old? Were you at a uh, restaurant? 20 years old, I went to. When did you stop working at commercials? Oh, long before that. Okay. After I grew up. When okay. the, when I grew up, they are like, oh, you're not a cute kid anymore? Yeah, we're done. <laughs> we're, we're done with you. <laughs> yeah. They're like, we thought you had a future, but then you grew up. No. Nope, yep. Get yep, out of here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which was fine. Your time in you Hollywood know? is over. Um, it's really not a fun job to have. It's yeah. not playing. It's no, work. No, no, it's not. You yeah. know, it over and over, and you still have to pretend like you're having fun. You know? I bet after being a child actor at certain it's points. It's not fun. Not, yeah, no. Unless not you're Bruno Mars and you just really, was really like, love it. Yeah, exactly. Who was your uh, like coach during that time? Was it your mom? Just like No coach. She was the, some... Whoever the person was? Yeah, yeah. Um, group of people that said, we got a job for you. Go do this. And, oh, it was just take after take after take until I got it right. Mm. Yeah. Was there any that you just slayed, got it right on the first I don't think take? so. No. They all took a while? Yeah. I mean, I remember this one voice commercial I did on the radio, and it was something dumb to where I had to laugh at the end of, the, at the end of it. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't really the happiest kid, so it was really hard to make me pretend laugh and sound sincere. Um, and I remember them getting quite annoyed at how many takes we had to laugh. And it just wasn't working. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't make somebody laugh. Yeah. You know? And then you get can't. frustrated and yeah. be like, enjoy yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's exactly what that That's was. Rough. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't for me. Okay. Yeah. So when you're. The kitchen's for me where I could just. What was your first kitchen job? 
So I was hired to be part of the opening team at T-Rex Barbecue in Berkeley. Oh, okay. Um, in 2004. Wait a minute. Didn't that place close? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It totally closed. Okay. Um, yeah. Some scandalous <laughs> shit happened. Don't say all closed. <laughs> some scandalous shit happened there? Um, well, Speak I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, okay. So I was at T-Rex Barbecue, mm-hmm. yeah, for a while. And that is where um, my first boss would unsnap my bra every single shift that I would be flipping burgers. And it was one of those, yeah, today we would totally say, how the fuck can you work? You know, I would usually just take off my apron and leave. Right. Easily. Um, probably not before you're telling just like, everybody about yeah, it. Yeah. You're just like, that's um, what happens to me. But everybody, everybody, when I first got into this business said, you're going to get shit on. You're going to, people are going to make fun of you and like, you know, want, make you want to leave, but you just fucking stay. Exactly. You yeah. fucking stay. If you really want to be it. good, you'll stay. Um, but that kind of taught my boss <laughs> that he was allowed to snap my bra every day. Um, as of course I would leave him hanging and you pick up all these fucking burgers while I go to the bathroom and get mad and re, you know, put my fucking clothes back on. Um, but yeah, I'm, he has gotten fired from every job since. Okay. Yeah. All for right. exactly those reasons. And that was your experience at your first restaurant. That's my experience at my first restaurant. And you're like, I'm still doing this. I don't know why. Yeah. Right. I just loved it. I loved it. I loved it all. And it really was a barbecue restaurant where we just loaded meat inside of a smoker and Press pressed a, button. a couple buttons. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, it was, an, oh, I love open kitchens. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was really cool to feed people. Yeah. Yeah. Be in that open kitchen environment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um that's where p- I learned. Yeah. That's where I learned, you know, even if it wasn't the, um, proper way of doing everything, I learned the basics of kitchen. Right. Yeah. How to move. Yeah. How to yeah. talk shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> <laughs> how to put yeah. fucking plastic containers on top of boxes <laughs> or like stack shit in the walk-in yes, yes. <laughs> oh that's so bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah right <laughs> so bad <laughs> how to wipe the table off onto the floor oh, that's a good one yeah so, <laughs> so there are there are some things that are normal yeah. until you learn better and then for some reason what if you're good at your job and you have pride yeah. that shit's not okay anymore <laughs> <You know? laughs> if you're good at your job and you well have if you pride, kind of yeah no, i get if, it i get it if yeah. somebody says what are you doing putting this on the ground and yeah. you go oh of course of course yeah i don't know i don't know what i'm <laughs> yeah, doing i don't know I what i'm doing i apologize yeah. and i thought I will it was never okay do this again yeah yeah um but yeah you have to you know be part of better environments to get better right so when did you leave that job? I left that job three or four years later. So I went to the okay, sister. Okay. <laughs> Chef, come on. <laughs> a lot of time. <laughs> you start you start horribly. Well, and then you stay there for four years? Yeah, because I kept moving up. What you in know? the fuck is going on? Okay, with the same so, chef? No. Okay. Um, well, okay, he was the executive suit sue there. And if once I went to dinners, it was mm-hmm. you know, it was not under his con his day right, um, right right i didn't have to talk to him anymore okay um but yeah after a while i was running that show mm-hmm. um and he had his day job that he came and left before dinner even started and okay. that's how he wanted to do his thing so great get out of here right i got this okay yeah um yeah and I, then i went to the sister restaurant at sea salt um which was a completely opposite direction having it be a seafood restaurant than a barbecue right um and that was slightly nicer nicer plated food because you can't really plate a pile of brisket beautifully anyway it's true um but i had to make a sandwich out of it (laughs) you had to yeah yeah Yeah. like how do we make this good yeah what do you yeah what would you do yeah i don't even know what you would do yeah you don't know put it in a tortilla maybe (laughs) who knows make a wrap um make a wrap um yeah so um that's where i kind of learned how to butcher fish okay um one cool thing about working in small restaurants where you have to do everything is that you do have to do everything um you know once i went to boulevard everybody was already butchering everything and by the time you touched it it was perfectly portioned for you i really liked learning how to butcher fish and animals and being completely responsible for what i was putting out right every day yeah did you do the ordering as well not there. Um, there were a few sous chefs at Sea Salt that um, that were all over it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And how long did you stay there? Just for a couple of years. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, after a couple of years, I kind of just needed to, I need more. Get out of here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where'd you go? Boulevard in San Francisco. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is a well-run machine. Mm -hmm. And that kind of spoiled me for the rest of my restaurant career because right. every single restaurant afterwards, I said, why can't you just have a liaison in between the front and the back of the house? Yeah, or yeah. Why can't you just have the person that does this, like only make sure that this yeah. happens? And That's a good point. Cause, uh, ruined you, me. Yeah. You yeah. get, um, not complacent. What is it? Uh, uh spoiled. It's yeah. spoiled. Oh, yeah. You know, and. If or you, you can, you see how well something can run very true but yeah. then if you're put in a situation where you don't have that thing Anymore? then you're yeah. like i i can't i can't this doesn't compute yeah. you know what i mean yeah. and it's you're not fluid and enough. then what kind of person are you somebody who can't handle their shit because yeah. you don't have everything that's why i like sops mm -hmm. you have all mm -hmm. the sops you want but you you can't teach like what how to react in certain situations right no matter right. how many sops you got mm -hmm. yes you know yes so i, I find happy happy medium mm -hmm. balance mm -hmm. like I feel the same way, kind of. Oh, I feel the same Go way. Go ahead, period. disagree with me, Chef. <laughs> it's okay. When I was at Prospect, <laughs> we I then helped open up Prospect, right? And um, there were recipes that I was developing, and you know, I believe that as a cook, you know what enough salt is. Mm -hmm. It's not hard. Salt to taste, you just got to taste it and make sure there's enough salt. But that was proven to be a difficult thing to execute with every single person that was touching recipes. Why you couldn't taste it and then put enough salt was beyond me. But I guess I have to tell you how many grams of salt to put in this, right. even though it'll be different every single time because vegetables are, di are different every single time. Um, and I just, it made me mad to understand that I needed to buy the gram, list everything out mm -hmm. because I or felt like people were happen. better than that. Okay. But apparently it wasn't working out. Mm -hmm. So it was more of, okay, I will gram out every single thing for you because I guess I cannot trust that you yeah. don't know how to, you, you can do this. Um, but that's, that's foundation. Did you consider yourself an aggressive cook? <laughs> Because <laughs> you are, no. you're, about, you're about to okay. fucking be like, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> so, okay, which is why I started this business. This yeah. business is supposed to be the opposite of um, anxiety and yeah, yeah, nightly concert up, you know, um, grind. This is supposed to be a very nice, simple job that we just make pickles and then we sell them. Mm -hmm. Easy. But, uh, you know, when people do have that cook background, um, I remember my sous chef who was just so stressed about getting things done. I'm like, look, dude, if we don't have mayo, we don't have mayo. I don't care. It's fine. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the time to do mayo, then we don't sell the mayo and it's totally fine. And she's like, but it's on the list. And I, you know that you, what, you want to do it. And I wish, I wish that I could get it done for you. And I'm just like, you just got to chill out and understand that this is not a restaurant mm -hmm. and that nobody expects anything from us. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm the only they one that need, would yeah. be upset and yeah. I'm not upset. And I'm telling you, this is not that job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it is difficult and we're always pushing the boundaries and we're always putting three more things on our list than we know we can handle. Right. But that's just who we are. You know? Do you think that's like innately just because you're a cook and you like that, the stress yeah. Like a deadline. Um. So I kind of felt that way when I was at Comi. Okay. So co after Wait a minute now. Comi Boulevard. How long are you there? Boulevard. I was there for just seven months. Seven months, and yes. then why did you leave? They asked me to help open Prospect. Okay, so you mm -hmm. went to Prospect, How and long I was you there Prospect? for about three or four years. Three I'm or four so years. Bad were at you time. were you a sous chef there uh -huh. before you left? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Were you sous chef walking in there? No. Um, okay. I was the first person to be promoted. Okay. After opening. Gotcha. Um, there were many, many. There were about five um, sous chefs in and out in the beginning of the first year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, who was the chef at the place? Ravi. Ravi Kapoor. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Mm. That's a chef that I try to be like, but I don't think I can ever be like. Yeah. You know? Um, a very chill, centered, leading by example person rather than you do what I'm telling you to do. Like, I'll just show you. Like, yeah. you watch me, and if you do what I'm doing, we're good. Um, Heard that. So Ravi Kapoor. Mm-hmm. 
is the man you hear to hear on motherfucking Susio Talk. Shout yes. out to him. <laughs> Shout Leho out. Leho Yacht Club. Yeah. Oh, uh, there's another spot. Here. Jen Jen. And then right. what's their newest one? Ooh, um, oh, well, they have that new booze out too. Oleana. They're doing they're, just they're doing, doing a lot. Everything. They're doing a lot right now. I gotta see. I gotta. I gotta go. Yeah. Gotta check it Have out. Have you been? No. It's pretty good. I never been. He one time he came into Charter Oak and I gave him way too much food. Like he was just trying to have a date there with his woman, and uh-huh. I completely <laughs> fucked it up. I just young rookie nah. chef move. Like, oh, let me hook this guy up, and then just it was appreciated. Like, uh, I mean, he he was looking at me like, bro, come on. He's like another one. Yeah, yeah. he's like, don't. You fucking <laughs> and it was lunch. Douchebag. No, it, it oh, okay. was dinner time. Okay. But you know, I always felt bad, and I never saw oh, him God. again. And I wish. If you could just hear me now, Robbie, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you can make I it up to him when he goes to Leho. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Overwhelm him. <laughs> there you go. So, how long were you at Prosper? Four or five years? Four or five. Years. Um, Three or four, I think. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Um, why'd you leave there? It was time. Um, okay, so after Robbie left, uh, we were kind of on our own for a while. Did he go to open Leho? Leho. He took and a all break. That? He okay. took a break, but and it was in his mind he was doing pop ups for Leho. Right. Um, but it was more of an R and D time for him. Um, he needed to just stop. Um, and then we, we did it. <laughs> we kind of did it, um, before hiring Chris Lamadou, um, chef Chris Lamadou. He came from the Michael Mina group, um, and Thomas Keller group. And he, you know, every single time he opened his mouth, we all learned something. And that's a different kind of chef too, a teacher. You know, not just a person who makes great food and executes and has a busy restaurant, but somebody who really wants to teach is pretty amazing. Um, selfless. And, yeah, every uh, everything everything positive. Um, I didn't love the whole Michael Mina vibe right. that was brought over. And it was time. I just needed to... And get the hell out of there? Get the hell out of there. Okay. Yeah. And at this point, are you living in the city? No. I've been living in uh, Oakland the whole time. Living yeah. in Oakland, commuting the whole time? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. God I damn. mean, it's just an Embarcadero right away. Right. And I was right off MacArthur, so mm. it was an easy. It was okay. easy. Yeah. Um, I did finish off my mace spray walking back at night quite really? a few times. Yes, off the McDonald's. Oh Damn, <laughs> yeah. so nothing ever for real happened. Nothing ever for real, no. You deterred um, that shit. Mm-hmm. I was almost stolen once, though. I was you almost, almost got stolen? I was almost kidnapped. All right, what I was, happened? Tell I us. was working as a host in Old Chicago mm-hmm. in Colorado, and, um, you know, the bus wasn't coming, and I kind of lived in the ghetto neighborhoods, and buses just wouldn't come sometimes, yeah. and sometimes you'd have to just start walking home. Mm-hmm. Um, and some dude, you know, luckily, it was like in front of a big Barnes & Noble um, parking lot that had a Starbucks in it and everything, and this person was kind of following me really, really slowly, saying, get in the car, I'll, I'll drive you home. Like, nah! Cool. Thank you, though. I'm just being nice. No, thank you. No, thank you. And then somehow, some way, I don't know how, but this dude like drives up in front of me and just grabs my arm. Um, and if I, you know, I always thought that I was a very strong person, but I very much learned that night that almost anybody can just grab me if they wanted. Right. You know, um, so after a lot of screaming and crying and kicking, I ran into the Starbucks, into Barnes & Noble, and I was like, I'm so sorry. I have no money. I don't want to have anything, but there's a guy over there who's trying to take me. Um, and then, yeah, that's when I got Mace. Whoa. Yeah. Chef. Did the it's people so at the Starbucks help you? Yeah, of course. Oh, good. Of course. This was good. before cell phones, you know? Mm. I didn't have a cell phone then. Um, it, was, it was not fun. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you got away. Well, thank you. Fucking use that mace. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, I am a very scared, frantic person. Is everybody, anyone's right here? I just get super tense and I just, you know, get like, skied out a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. And then mace. Yeah. So <laughs> don't careful. fucking run up on chef even <laughs> behind you in the kitchen. You don't. get mace, son. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, after Prospect, I was CDC at Got Gather. And I had never worked somewhere that I hated so much. Yeah. How did you get the CDC job over there? Just they applied? Just, yeah. yeah. They were looking for somebody. Um, were you looking to take that step or did you even, yeah. even look at it like yeah. that? Yeah. I was looking to take that step. Were you like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm doing this? Uh, yeah. I mean, at Prospect, it really kind of boosted me up a little yeah. bit. We were able to 
put things on the menu mm-hmm. and people who came and you know were supportive right I, there's no reason to not believe that you know mm. um and yeah i was ready to move up and so i i got that job um and i did not like the way that chef treated people mm-hmm. it was a pretty disgusting horrible place to work really? at that time yeah i had never worked for somebody who just used anger and um loudness to mm-hmm. get things done right um did things get done no because it doesn't work right yeah um it was a it was a dis- yeah i couldn't even describe how gross the feeling was right. um the moment the one week in i realized what had happened oh he's been on his best behavior until right now oh okay. really and then all in front of the house people you know they'd say okay so like this is really how it is i'm like okay so none of you bothered to mention this before i like was like here at and this they job. all just worked there no matter like they all just did it yeah i don't i don't get it how people could still support somebody that way mm-hmm. um, what was his name sean baker sean baker that sounds really familiar um i'm sure he from? is not like that today he can't. Yeah. I, I think he was the chef of Millennium. Millennium or something. Millennium? Millennium. Okay. And then it was Gather, and then I don't know, um, but I don't really care. Got you. Um, so yeah. you took that CDC job. How long did that last? Mm, I think just six or seven months again. Right, and then you were like, I need to I go. I couldn't. Yeah. yeah. I, I like, the one thing I, what my only job was to support the chef, mm-hmm. and I couldn't even do that. You know, because he would be a, he's not easy to support. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I If produce came in, all you had to say is produce is here. Let's go put it away. Instead of saying, screaming, the fucking produce is here. You know, what the fuck is your problem? Yeah. Okay, the produce is here. Let's go put the produce it's away. Like, Bro, I'm right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why, why, what, why you got to yeah, yell? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, funny. and then just like the degrading of people, like the, the the shit that he would say to the cooks, you know, I just like I couldn't even look at them. Mm. I couldn't even like. Is I there just anybody looked, that walked out? Any cooks that walked um, out? Um, one person got fired, and he wasn't even allowed to say goodbye to us as he was getting fired. It was really? get the fuck out of my restaurant right now, and yelling at him, get the fuck out of my restaurant, and I'm like. I'll get the fuck out of your restaurant, you know? Like, Did the guests hear him? Uh, I can't imagine that they couldn't. I can't imagine that, oh. you know? it. Of course. That was an open kitchen, too, mm. kind of. There was half back and half front. Right. Um, but, yeah, I, I couldn't do it. So, so then you leave there, and yes. are you looking for another CDC job? I just wanted a pleasant job. I just wanted to have a nice job. Yeah. And that's when Comey was. God, Comey was great. Comey yeah. saved your life. It was a it was a great job. Chef James, what yeah. did, what were you doing over there? I was uh, just chef de partie mm-hmm. of um, the cold station. Did he yeah. know that you were coming from the CDC position? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he knew my situation, and that was in a complete opposite environment. Mm-hmm. Everybody just did their shit, and they did it well, and we were very silent ninjas, and we were great. That's awesome. That's it. However. You only fed 43 people a night. Right. And I was very much used to restaurants where we did up to 300 a night. Um, The adrenaline wasn't there. It was really great to be executing every single thing to the exact degree that was asked. And we can do that. Easy. Mm -hmm. But I could also do this and that, you know. And like um, I took over baking the breads um, there and their sourdoughs and... um, once a week after service was picnic day um, where we'd all have snacks. And that's really what I looked forward to um, was my prep after doing the station was making a really bomb dinner for us after service. Yeah. Um, and that I loved that. I loved it. That's a, that's a cool thing. Um, yeah. After a while, it was I needed more again. Yeah. <laughs> I needed to do more. Um, I. I loved it. Uh, I just wish maybe we fed maybe 30 more, 20 more people. Right. You know? Um, How many people work in the kitchen? Four. Four people? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Including pastry? Yep. Wow. Yeah. Three stations in pastry plus chef. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. What year was this? Ooh. I'm so bad at this. 
Um, it had to have been, oh, what is it right now? Twenty. I don't know. I have no idea. This is before their second star. Okay. Before their second star. Got you. Years ago. Um, and that want for more, is that what made you kind of ultimately say, yeah? So that want for more, I uh, then went to 20 Spot, which is a wine um, spot? wine company or yeah. wine bar in San Francisco in the Mission. They still open? Yeah. 20 Spot. 20 Spot. It's as tiny as, it's as, tiny as this room here. Okay. Um, what are you the, saying about my fucking no, room, <laughs> That, oh, that my you, you can run a restaurant in this. So that's okay. what I'm saying. All right. <laughs> a little there wine you go, bar. There you go. I like it. Um, I like it. Yeah. Um, it was my husband and I, and we bumped butts all day long because the kitchen was literally smaller than the width of us. Mm -hmm. So anytime we had to go across each other, we just grows it grazed against each other right um that was too much just too tight of a space right it's not fun when you're doing that um so you you got married during this time i got married while i was at pros uh, prospect yeah right right yeah. Was he, he's also cooking he is also a chef yeah how, so same industry yes so he was Dope. my first chef uh, uh -huh. not the one that was an asshole but the executive well, let's hope not, yeah. chef. <laughs> <laughs> the let's, executive let's chef of that place. That, um, <laughs> yeah. Although he keeps saying, you know, I don't even know why you didn't say anything. If you said anything, you know, that that, per that wouldn't have ever happened. Right, right. Like, well, you know, maybe you should have made it seem like I could say something. Yeah. Um, I hear you. Yeah. Sometimes you, but, like you can't say anything. No. So cool. So how long, how many years of marriage is it now? 11, 12. Damn, a long girl. time. It's crazy. It's crazy. Good for you guys, man. Thank you. That shit does not exist within our age. Not a realm. lot. Um, or business, but you know, we do thrive because we hardly see each other. <laughs> He's working on it all the time. I'm working all the time. Right. We get to catch up twice a week. Mm -hmm. and it's great. What does he do? He's the executive chef um, at a place called the Bull Valley Roadhouse. Okay. Where's that? In a place called Port Costa. Do you know where this is? No. Okay. Nobody does. Um, In California? Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, okay. So you know what that bridge that connects Vallejo to the East Bay? Yeah. The Bellinas Bridge or something yeah. like that. It's right there. You know where Crockett is? No. You exit Crockett to get to Port Costa. Whoa, crazy. Yeah. Um, it's it feels like a little fairy tale little land where you just drive to the end where there's no more place to drive and that's where you park your car. Um, there's water right there and then there's just there's two restaurants, there's a post office. Not much else. There's some people oh, who live there. It's really have to go interesting. Go fucking hit it's, that up. It's a very what kind very of food's cool, he doing over there? Just, whatever he wants. Yeah. I mean, at this point, this must be a hidden gem. It's a really cool. The bar menu is quite amazing. Um, really great, really great cocktails. Uh, the bar menu is, uh, or the bar program is run by Tamir Ben Shalom, who um, I met at T-Rex, but his main stay was at Slanted Door. Mm. And he has uh, just really delicious drinks um, and then really fun food to go with it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy, approachable, fun, different, and sustainably correct. Right. Yeah. So 20 spot. 20 spot. Um, I forgot about, I forgot about um, while I was at Sea Salt, we um, did a tiny little week private chef at David Copperfield's private island in Musha Key. David Copperfield, <laughs> the magician? The magician. Yeah. Whoa. Um and What's his kitchen like? Oh, it is it's a regular commercial kitchen because it's not his kitchen. It's mm. his staff's kitchen, of course. Right. Um Does he have ma magician shit on the walls everywhere? He's got a rooms f dedicated to Houdini. Um, really? It's it's amazing if you're into that shit, you know. We just went into it saying, "Who is this weird motherfucker <laughs> who's like Yeah has an island that is being rented to another rich family who just wants to have a party there. You what know? does David Copperfield eat for dinner? Oh, my God. I'm glad you asked. Yes. Okay, so Magician there, diets. <laughs> there are posters of how to feed this person. <laughs> Laminated posters on what his birds eat, which I had to dice up cantaloupe and make sure there were no seeds for his toucan birds. Um Mm -hmm. So Mr. Copperfield likes only well done steak and you must cut it into bite sized pieces for him. Right. You must. Otherwise, you will send it back and have us cut it into bite sized pieces for him. Um, he doesn't cut his own steak. No, he also doesn't take off his own tags on everything. Everything is somebody's job 
is to cut off tags on everything they buy before it reaches inside of his house. The more money somebody has, the weirder you can be. Right, right. And this person was really strange as a human. Oh. Yeah. Um, it makes you really think, I like regular people a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the crew that supports that kind of person, too, they buy into that whole thing. You know, yeah. they, they like... They They're like, like it all. Mr. Copperfield would like you to do this. Yes. And you're like, yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> can he see us right now? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, that was Where an interesting job. Where did you stay job. on this island? Oh, in one of their um, cook's quarters. <laughs> in their cook's quarters. Cook's quarters. Nah, they, okay. they had little um, cottages. Okay. Um, okay. And the people who rented the whole place had luxurious places to stay. I'm sure David's was a luxurious place mm -hmm. to stay. Um, we were in a different little house and whatever beach we wanted to go to it had to be this beach don't don't show yourself to the guests mm -hmm. um it was a very interesting job because regular people all you have to do is have money to be there and yes. want to have a party in where nobody else is allowed um so the people who are renting this island um requested nachos and french fries for most of the time so Whoa. yeah i mean the idea was fun. The mm. idea of going to the Bahamas and being in a private island and cooking for a week was fun, especially if you're getting paid at your other job. Mm. It was just such a strange thing to have to do. You are truly the help, and you are here to make you fries at any time of day or night. Um, and it was really dumb how, you know, three groups of the same, you know, at the same, at different times would say, oh, I'm ready for French fries now. Like, <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am. <laughs> you yeah. know, you're like uh, crazy. I didn't know. I don't have any. Yeah, I don't yeah. have. Uh, how did you provision that? Did you have oh, to order God. the food? Or yeah, that was really tough because there was only a charter boat that right. came to the island once a week. Um, so we had to either we had to figure out the whole menu, and of course, because we are from California, we just said you know lemon, blah 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 blah. For some reason, they had to add all the frilly, stupid, descriptive words where it was just really dumb that you're saying lemon essence. I don't even know what the fuck lemon essence is. Just write lemon. Can you just write lemon? Yeah. And they said, no, I mean, it sounds better with the essence. And you're like, I, ugh, ugh, this is yeah. gross. <laughs> like, I, I'm putting lemon essence right now. As lemon you essence. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is lemon essence? I don't even know. I would say it's, an, what are those things essence that you- of lemon. Oh, fragrance? Yeah, or what are those? Uh, um, are essence and fragrance the same thing? Extracts? I don't know. What are those things that people put inside those um, water vape things? Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> um, essential Chef. oils. Uh, okay. Essential oils. I think that's what a lemon essence would be, is an essential oil. I, don't, I really don't know what essence refers to in the yeah. food world. Hmm. Yeah. It, to me, it's a smell. Right. I don't know. Anyway, the, our essential that was the least oils of our... really essential tonight <laughs> at eleven. <laughs> Those are the least of our issues yeah, there. Right? Yeah, um, yeah. The way we did it, it, we yeah. There was a lot of things where you just said, "Oh, I guess we're gonna do this instead." Did you get there via boat? Yeah. Okay. We flew to um, the main island of the Bahamas, um, Nassau, Nassau, right? um, and then we took a boat. That was so much fun. Speedboat. Is out. it his own like? The David Copperfield boat? No, I think it was just um, the, the people. Yeah, so the Bahamians boat. run. Yeah, the Bahamians do run the island. Is that how you say it? Bahamians? The Bahama people. Bahamians. People of Bahamas. Yeah, the Bahamians. Bahamites. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> um, that was fun. That was an interesting job. And, um, you know, you always just realize how how class works. Yeah. Like that and those situations. Right. Yeah. But Find out who you really are. You're like, yes. oh, I'm a worker. I'm the help. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not. I'm the worker. Yeah, not allowed to be here. Yep. <laughs> Damn, crazy. So, how long was that for? Oh, that was just a week. A two week. weeks, maybe. Okay, yeah. two weeks. Got yeah. you. Yeah. And then once you're done with that, you come back and yeah, town, we just went back get to work. Get your shit together. Went back to work. Yeah. Got you. Um. Yes. How long were you at Tony Spot? Tony Spot was. Until we moved to Sonoma, Sonoma. Um, so probably one moved year. Moved to Sonoma. Yeah. Why? We moved to Sonoma to be the reopening chefs of a place that was shut down and recently sold. 
this was an interesting way the owners went about it. Um, the owners of this restaurant um, who had just purchased the place mm -hmm. really wanted outside of the community people to come and change it. He didn't change the name of the restaurant. He didn't make friends with the community around us. And so when we came in and changed everything about it, everybody was like, what the fuck are you doing? Where is my prawns with Cumberland sauce? Um, I've only learned about these things in like 70s cookbooks. And I didn't even know what that stuff was that they were serving before. Cumberland sauce? Yeah, I don't even know Whoa, what the fuck. Yeah. Um, but this kind of place was huge steam tables mm. and the cooks just scooped and put on plates. Mm. There was no such cooking there. And we kept the whole crew because it's not their fault that they don't know how to cook and it's not their fault that they don't have a job anymore. Mm. So we kept everybody and half of them had, had to go. Like they literally didn't know w how to move. Like they didn't know, <laughs> I felt so bad. Um, but this person had to go. Um, this person was so used to scooping or reheating and putting it on a plate that when orders came in, actual orders came in on a ticket and I would say, fire fish, please. He wouldn't even know, like I would say pescado. Oh, how, how else do I say fish in, in Spanish? Just, just fire the fucking fish. And he would take out a chicken and I said, fish, the fish. Pescado? Fish? And he said, he just looked at me with just such blank faces. Right, but did he speak Spanish? Yeah, and he also spoke English. We communicated all day long. He just didn't know how to do anything. And, mm. you know, after 10 times of walking through how you sear the fish and you put it in the oven, you take it out, you let, let's do this now. I couldn't believe that I was walking somebody through right. how to cook right now while we're trying to put out this, this food. Um, and he just, yeah, he's like, I've been here for 30 years. I, I don't, I don't know how to do anything else. It's like, I understand, but you're going to either have you to. You fired a man who worked there for 30 oh my God, years? You would too. So then, okay. So then <laughs> the guy, no, Seth. no. So then okay. there is, um, the pantry cook who was about 50 years old. And we said, Hey, you want to try, come make some food? fish you know he's like, i'll try it out and you know he definitely heard and was grasping and he was really getting a hang of it and we would joke you know how long were you at that station in pantry station making salads he goes about 30 years yeah. i'm like how the fuck why are you still here why are you still here making salads well, it's like well because it's the restaurant this is what i this is where i work yeah like, I mean, some people don't treat it like a passion career you know yeah it's just a thing to do yeah but like for 30 years You've been making salad. I mean, when when didn't you want to come over I here? I think I you think know? we we come from a group of <coughs> cooks and chefs that are like, you're never good enough, so we can't just work at a place for thirty years because then we'll feel like we're not good enough. Right. But like that dude, he didn't come over here to fucking be a chef. He came no. over here to fucking hang out with his family. Yeah, you know? yeah. So at yeah. that point, it's like fuck it. But that's cool that he moved into the hot station. Yeah, after yeah. And then it years. really made him quite, you know, um, love what he's doing a little bit more because there was something that he was learning. It's his pride. If you're learning something, yeah, you're you're proud of yourself and you're doing a good job because you like to do it. Um, and he definitely th um, thrived because right. of that. Yeah. What's he doing now? I'm sure he's a cook in um, La Salette, someplace off the square in Sonoma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Dope. Yeah. So uh, you live in Sonoma while I you I live in there? Sonoma, yes. You live yes. in Sonoma right now. We Same do. place you moved to. Same. Yes. Got you. Yes. Okay. So yeah. how long were you at that restaurant? Uh, the Kenwood restaurant for three years. Three years. And um, throughout that three years, I realized I was not in the East Bay or San Francisco. There was not a line of cooks who were willing to take their job if they weren't good enough. Yeah. Um, I just had to either... <laughs> be fine with this lack of talent here um or do it all yourself or do it all myself and that's what i did mm -hmm. um so you that was my second crazy. Uh, th <laughs> that was another place that was not fun for us um it was fun because we had very strange rules according to this um owner he wanted he was a little pretentious mm -hmm. um every single animal we brought in had to be a whole animal which is amazing and it's really cool and sometimes 
not favorable. <laughs> yeah. Um, not efficient. Goats and f- pigs are fine. But when it comes to beef, you're really going to make us go through a whole fucking beef. Like, okay, Stemple Creek, save us a whole cow, please. Can you quarter it and send me a quarter of the cow this week and then a quarter of a cow in two weeks? Yeah. Yeah. So it was the most amazing thing to be able to learn how to butcher humongous animals in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and really... We've all used the entire animal every single time from the beginning of time as far as my jobs go. But this was for real. You you had to use up all the liver and the kidneys before you had more steaks. That's just how it goes. Right. Um, and the customer base just wanted steak. They didn't give a shit that we were doing it right. Yeah. They didn't fucking care that we were proper in the way of killing an animal to feed you and, and then using the whole animal before we kill another one. Um, they just wanted their steak. Um, and that's how people, I mean, that's how restaurants are. You buy steaks. That's, you, you don't buy a whole animal for the steak. Um, the guests don't care. The, the guests don't care. They just no. have expectations. And you, and you do it or not. Fulfill them or yeah. don't. Yeah. yeah. So. It's kind of, uh, I wonder where restaurants will go in the next 20 years. It can't be yeah. this way. As it, long as we're just, teaching people though yeah. um when well, mo- you really talk to people they agree mm-hmm. they do agree with everything that we agree mm. with um but they still want those prawns you yeah. know and they're not going to pay somebody to pick them up off the ground they'd rather just have the whole net graze the bottom of that ocean um which is the wrong way to be catching any kind of fish right um but yeah i mean there are some restaurants who are charging what it takes and people are still going, which means that it is working. Um, mm-hmm. It is slowly changing. We just have to realize that McDonald's is not like pure, like good for you food, you know, not McDonald's apologies, mm-hmm. um, but any How really fast <laughs> food that are selling a burger for what, $1.99 now? Yeah, that's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's kind of scary. It crippling the market. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> gotta bring it back to mcdonald's no so when did you so then you moved up there you did this job for a little bit and yeah. then you after you got out of that that's when you were like so pickles. i started i started the pickle works business while i was there um really it was a there was one exact moment where this business was founded um while making cauliflower soup of course you're using the cauliflower the mm-hmm. white cauliflower but we buy um our produce from a place called Feed Sonoma, which is an amazing, crazy, very high-end produce company. It's very nice. That harvests to order. Yeah. I mean. It's fucking crazy. They harvest to order. That's, that's even insane. Mm -hmm. All of that takes a lot of, yeah, it all takes a lot. Put the order in before Tuesday, before 1 a.m. and (laughs) fucking Friday before 4 a.m. Yep. Like, what are these deadlines? Who's yeah. making well, these fucking then deadlines the order, up? Then I get the order um, that next day, and then you get your delivery the day after. So it does take time for, like, me to gather your order, right? I just I just thought it was the weird – the times were just right. strange yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is what we settled on. I yeah. mean, I get it, but it's yeah. kind <laughs> yeah. of a weird thing to yeah. settle on, you yeah. know? But Feet Sonoma, to this day, one of the best produce companies yes. in the Bay Area. Yep. Um, the stems, the leaves – of the cauliflower were just as beautiful as the florets. Mm. I, it was, I was unable to t- throw those away. Mm. Um, like literally unable to. So we started chopping them up and we made a kimchi out of that. And that's what we garnished the, the soup with and cauliflower, 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 you know, um, it was great. So then we started doing that with everything. Um, every trim, every stem, every anything that was not being used, I would ferment it in some way. And, that's how the business was started. Yeah. Of course, pickle plates were getting very, very popular at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, and all all the um, work that we were doing with not a lot of people coming into the restaurant gave us a lot of time to play around. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we did a dinner for George Ann Brennan once um, with her uh, French dinner that we were asked to do. And we turned this allium puree into an aioli. And that kind of started the business, too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Weirdly enough, this mayo is one of the best selling things of a pickle business. Really? Which is why I can't call this a pickle business, you know? So it's just like, what, soubise? Uh, no, it's a fermented fennel, onion, garlic. Okay. Made into a mayo. 
Oh. Yeah, we're not using any other acid, no vinegar, no citrus. We're just using the fermented stuff that acts like it. Dope. It works. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then that way we can make everything probiotic. Um, I was really only doing this because I liked the taste. Um, I liked the taste of these things, and it was slightly more difficult than bake baking cookies. You know, I if I just wanted to make something for people to eat that people would love, cookies are kind of the thing to do for mm -hmm. people because nobody doesn't like a cookie. Um, that'd be easy enough, but that's kind of difficult to do just because it's not super interesting. Yeah. I'm sure those cookie bakers out there are very interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of ha thrive on doing things different <coughs> and a little bit on the harder side. So um, we started fermenting everything and started selling products out of the restaurant um, to customers who were interested and supportive. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the time we were out, um, I had established the business enough to do farmer's markets, but not enough to pay myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's when I was finally out of the restaurant world, um, kind of, I guess not at this point. I was a consulting chef at Sunflower Cafe mm -hmm. in Sonoma. Okay. And that I shouldn't have taken. Right, why? Because um, I didn't know cafes. I knew restaurants. Mm. I didn't understand that fast pace and the things you have to do to get there. Um, I thought that you could make, you should, you should make your own fucking bacon, put the bacon on a tray and get it crispy in the oven. Uh, that some, some things are a little too much. Right. Um, everything was portioned pre ahead of time instead of the people, the cooks up front, just putting the right amount of things. So we were doing double everything, double things all the time, right. just so that you can be faster 10, 10 more seconds. Um, this person hired me because they liked what we were doing at the Kenwood restaurant. And so I said, okay, all your chicken salad, we're going to buy chicken. We're going to roast chicken and we're going to pick the chicken and make chicken salad. But like when you do that at a cafe, you're, you're, you're signing everybody up for way more work that they're not even, they don't even know how to do. Yeah. Um, and that was my bad. <laughs> I didn't realize, you know, like how unequipped these uh, cafe cooks were yeah. I just didn't realize it and it was um I'm pretty sure they're back to where they were before you right. know I, they probably were like oh that was fun Sam great thanks a lot you know um but I mean I I'm sorry I didn't really like, know what else to do thank you for learning your lessons through us <laughs> <laughs> yeah Wait, and, really and them too you they should just <laughs> hire a cafe chef don't yeah. hire yeah. a restaurant person either that or like you know don't ask to turn it into something it's not. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. A cafe stays a cafe. You cannot turn that into a restaurant. Stays a cafe. You know, it's Damn. a re breakfast place. With the fuego yeah. over here. Okay. No. <laughs> With the flames. Nah. All right. Um, yeah. So that was what fun. What is your goal with the Golden State Pickle Works? What do you want to do? The you goal one day. On pickles? Yeah, I do. Um, you want to be in every store? Yes. <laughs> So originally, I um, just, yeah, we wanted to have all of our pickles in everyone's menus um, and at all of the grocery stores. Obviously, that's not, that's not a possibility or even ideal. Um, we can't be at Safeway. Mm -hmm. That would never work. We are, our kimchi is $13 to customers. Um, that's just too expensive for people. But some people can. We just have to cater towards those mm -hmm. high-end retail places. Um, what are some stores that you're in? Mm, Berkeley, uh, Bowl? Berkeley Bowl. Uh, Oliver's, our four uh, locations of Oliver's up north. Um, we are at Preserved, right on Telegraph. Okay. Um, small little places. Um, we should be at Piedmont Grocery. We should be in Whole Foods. We are working on that, even though that's not small. Um we should be at Good Earth. We sh we were at Rainbow for a while. We were at um, Byright for a while. It's just, you know, before I dialed down our entire brand and image, mm -hmm. I was just trying to do it all. I was just trying to sell whatever I could to anybody. Um, first of all, I'm not a salesperson. I just make this shit. Someone else's job is to go do that. Um, 
I'm just not good at bothering you more than once. If, if you say no, I'm going to say, okay, I get it. But that's not how it goes. You have to bother them again and then bother them again. But I'm not that kind of person to right. bother you all the time. So you had to so get I a just person never, to Yeah, I end up just not being in places because of it, you know? Um, yeah, so um, w- with mentorship, uh, there is a brand out there who founded Adwala, sold Adwala, and founded another company. He's a customer of ours at the Sonoma Farmer's Market, and he blows so much smoke up my ass every single time. And I finally said, okay, fine. You tell me exactly how to do this, and I will do this. Um, and he's like, all right, well, you should get rid of the Golden State Pickle Works. You should call it something else. Come out with a new label. Have a new look. Only put your condiments and salad dressings on the shelves because really nobody needs any more kimchi, sauerkrauts, or pickles. Um just invent this new category and you'll be the player. I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, we just started that in January and we are now launching Collective Cultures. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just hoping, you know, um, throughout all of this, I realize that if I'm going to be trying to feed the regular folk, um, the people who don't go out to restaurants... I've learned the people who buy our stuff at farmer's markets are the people who you don't see at restaurants. Right. Um, they care about the oil you're using. And before this, I'm like, nobody has ever asked what oil we use at restaurants. And that's because nobody, like, when they're at a restaurant, they're there for the experience and they're in our hands. Um, they're not going to be assholes and say, um, can you use different oil? But at their home, they're not going to buy something if they don't like the oil that you use. Right. So, um, yeah, we, we started doing collective cultures and we were hoping to really go big, um, as soon as I open my kitchen and really begin to produce it, uh, everything we're going to, we're already in pod foods, which is a distribution regional company that we have had to put a pause on. So as soon as we're ready, we're going to go live and hope that we have enough counts to where they all just start delivering for us. Mm-hmm. Um, because, God, deliveries are some of the not most fun things to do. Right. Yeah. I was gonna... Demos are even worse. <clears throat> Ugh. You don't like demos? You seem to have the the characteristics that have a good demo person. <laughs> like you, yes. you seem to really enjoy people. <laughs> do you want, do you want to fucking start a partnership shop? Yes, no, please I go to the grocery do, stores and sell my shit. I'll do demos for you. Be like, hey, you buddy over there, you like pickles? Oh, see, I could never do that. <laughs> <laughs> you could do it. You know, oh, come on. Nah, come on. No. <laughs> if you're there to play off and like you stay serious, and I'm just like saying wild <laughs> shit to you but you have to say serious yeah then we'll get we'll get a good following yeah there you go but uh <laughs> until then who knows yeah well that's cool man yeah so are you um are you in restaurants right now too yeah so we deliver to a handful or multiple um cafes restaurants corporate kitchens um we we do some white label or special projects for love ski um oh, for, for love okay. oak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we make their white kimchi. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um we our kimchi was a part of the Osuzan um dinner at Single Thread mm-hmm. a while ago. Um a little saint carries our our items on their shelves. Um yeah, um Bon Appetit catering company uses our stuff. Google has, you know, corporate kitchens and things. That's cool. Yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah, all through feed, you know, feed uh, Sonoma delivers to a bunch oh. of different places and they help us get accounts and yeah whenever we see a new restaurant it's kind of cool that they're willing to spend $14 on a quart of yeah. kimchi yeah <laughs> um, and then it's it's interesting how how many bread and butters are sold at restaurants you know like the to me the most simplest thing the most classic pickle one can ever make mm-hmm. it's the first pickle everybody knows how to make um, and we sell a ton to restaurants yeah to great restaurants yeah. Do you, uh, personal preference, do you like the fermented pickle or the vinegar pickle? Fermented, always. Why? Because everything in America is sugar, and we can do better without sugar. Okay. Yeah. Um, so one thing that I- Do you hate vinegar? I, no, not at all. 
<laughs> vinegar, like <laughs> salt and vinegar like, chips <laughs> are the ones that I buy every time. Okay. Potato chips. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, the more I was researching what I was doing and the more I was teaching people about what we were doing, the more I learned how good it, this is for you. Mm. Natural fermentation, dare I say, cures us. Um, it brings us back to before our lab created dead foods have been on shelves that we have completely poisoned ourselves with. Um, I really love the fact that this new thing about people turning around the label and reading ingredients lists that's a new fad that's happening and really really <laughs> cool i know isn't that sad that you're laughing about this yeah. <laughs> yeah um but a lot of people ask is your mustard gluten-free i'm like it fuck they all should be gluten-free just so you know <laughs> yeah and they go well they're not you yeah. know like i just so that it's cheaper it's just all lawsuit so that it's, shit what so you don't get sued if somebody eats a sandwich yeah. and they get sick, your lab would get sued because the mustard was on the sandwich. So that's probably oh, why there's gluten the free. Bread, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that's how dumb yeah. just yeah. shit is in the courts. Oh, and you hear of, of these yeah. people winning and you're like, who are these lawyers? Yeah. Oh my God. You know, I remember this woman got so mad at me because I didn't tell her the kimchi had um, fish sauce in it. I was like, well, if I mean, you know, she's I'm a vegan and you should have told me. I'm like, well, if you're a vegan, don't you look at the fucking ingredients list? And also kimchi always has fish sauce. Yeah. Just so you know. Um, and that's when I just have to say, how about you fill out a customer complaint form? and We'll bring it to the board. Um, yeah. Who's because, the board? You? Uh, pff, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> no one. But then the I don't. The board get, is me. Yeah. And then then I don't have to be the one to try and fix or argue with mm -hmm. you. And sometimes sorry everybody i kind of argue with you because you're in the wrong but i also know the customer's right and at the end i always say so i'm going to do this for you even though i understand that you're upset right now i'm here's a new one but just know that this is like a one-time thing like i don't think that this was the wrong thing here mm -hmm. but that's not what they care about they just want to be heard yeah yeah um, Some and people usually, complain just to complain. Yeah, and yeah. and just being heard is what they need. So, so we need to separate you from the guests. Is what oh, we need yeah, to yeah. do. See, sometimes I'm really good. Yeah, the, I'm farmers markets. I'm really good. Yeah. Um, but three farmers markets a week is my cap. Four, I become a detriment to my business. Yeah. Yeah. No good. <laughs> yeah, I my that. attitude comes yeah. out and then I get snappy and I say like, I remember the two times where I told people, you know, you're never coming back. You're right. That was my fourth market of the week. And wow. I just realized never do four markets. Just understand your limits. Yeah. Yeah. That's don't my limit. Don't be alienating your business, chef. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but also... But also don't be don't a douche. Don't fucking bother her. <laughs> don't right? be a you douche. You see her at the farmer's market? Don't fucking talk to her. All no. right? <laughs> Fuck yeah, chef. No. Well, uh, Everyone come visit me at the market. Yeah, come, come visit. Yeah. yeah. What are the uh, what are the markets that you're at? Friday is I'm in Sonoma. Mm -hmm. uh, Saturday is I'm in Napa. And Sundays I'm in Oakland at the Temescal Farmer's Market at the DMV parking lot. Boom. DMV parking lot in yes. Oakland, Napa, fucking everywhere. Yeah. Chef. It's a damn pleasure to have you on. Thank thanks you. Thanks for reaching out. Nah, thanks for... Thanks for the pickles. Hey, on, I hope honestly. that you get to like... Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to see what you do with the collective cultures. Me too. I'm going to do something really shameless. What? Um, if anybody who really wants to be a part of a collective cultures ground level before blowing the fuck up, come holler at me. Yeah, info at collectivecultures.com. Okay. Yeah. Looking for some staff. I'm looking for a, a main person for sure. Right. Yeah. It's not shameless, chef. No. <laughs> it's not shameless. Oh, every single person's looking for people, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everybody's looking Somebody for Somebody has to be done with restaurants out there. Yeah. Right? There's this, a lot of, yeah. There's yeah. people that are personal chefing right now that right. probably Ugh. don't want to be. Yeah, I was a personal yeah. chef for a wine family. Yeah. The four-year-old, oof. Yeah, the, the fucking kids have yeah. more uh, yeah. problems than the adults. And you're like, what did we do? Yeah. I remember once as I walked into the door, the seven-year-old came and like, was so excited to see who came through the door. And she looked at me and she's like, oh. I walked out outside and she goes, it's just the chef. Wow. Bitch, it's just your fucking chef. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What can I make you for dinner tonight, little one? Yeah. Damn. 
That's <laughs> fucked up, Chef. I'm sorry you got disrespected like that by oh, a four year old. No, no. It's it all is good because um you I'm appreciating every day even more. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. politically correct, right? Do it. <laughs> Send it. Cheers. All right. Fuck yeah. Awesome. This is your talk. Peace out. Peace out.